The best kind of doors are the doors you have to explain. All right. Welcome, welcome to Unhinge, where uh, door dorks, door hardware nerds, and today glass nerds get together to slam and knock and shatter some door bells. Uh, we learn, we laugh, sometimes we cry, but most importantly, we dork out and have fun while we learn a little bit more about doors and life safety and security and glass. Um, if you haven't gotten the hint, today we have a very special guest, uh, Mr. Andrew, the OG glass nerd. Um, Andrew, why don't you hop on and uh, introduce yourself, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, and maybe a fun fact. Oh, Mr. Andrew was my father. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my name's Andrew Herring. I am Vice President of Business Development at the National Glass Association, NGA. Uh, we're the only nonprofit trade association serving the glass glazing and fenestration industries in North America. Fun fact about me, um, I am deathly as scared, as scared of, uh, of door dorks that work for Asa Abboy. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm a little nervous. Now, real fun fact, let's see. Um, I have a background in traditional illustration. Oh. I've exhibited both with the Los Angeles and New York Society of Illustrators. Really? Uh, but I don't do that anymore, really. No, Not that's fun. awesome. What, what have we seen any of your work? Uh, yeah, you heard this little book called Where the Wild Things Are? No, <laughs> no I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait, what? I think that came out a little bit before. I'm not that old. Uh, no, I, I didn't have much, much published. I, I did, I, I did some, some fine art stuff and I did a few things in some, some smaller publications, but it was mostly exhibiting at shows. So I, I doubt you would have seen it. And I don't even think you could find it online if you try it these days. I'll find it. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know her, you love her, uh, Mrs. Mia Merrill. Uh, why don't you jump on and say hi today? Yeah. Hello. Welcome to episode 14. I think it's 14. I think it's 14. Yeah, of Unhinged. Uh, so my fun fact today is I'm going with the nerd theme. Uh, I was on the robotics team in eighth grade uh, for first robotics, and we were sponsored by Lego. So I'm a Lego maniac. Wow. That's a, that's a cooler fun fact than mine. I want to go again. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I was. there's like a few girls on the team. I happen to be one of them. I, you know, have a degree in engineering too. So total nerd to the core, but. Yeah. So that, that might've been like when you, one of the reasons you are where you are today, right? That was like one of your core memories growing up that like <laughs> led that to your story of engineering and nerdiness. I don't know. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and, totally. and as a kid, I, I got a Lego stuck in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> different, different upbringings. <laughs> Mine was uh, the nose, Andrew. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I never did that because then I wouldn't have enough to build. Because you were smart enough to be an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Benji, uh, what's your fun fact for this episode? Um, so before we started recording, we were talking a little bit about family. And uh, uh, I come from a very large family. Uh, and I actually have, I have to du double check my number, but I think it's at least 136 first cousins. Um, so it, if if you've heard a story of like, oh, I've got a cousin that did that, I probably have a cousin that did that. So, <laughs> so how many of your cousins are in the, we'll say the door opening industry? <laughs> uh none that I know of. I know a couple are in construction. So uh, there's, there's adjacent. That. And then there's uh, one that was with an organized, like a uh, industrial organization. So they dealt with doors, but like oh, a little different. I thought you were going to say organized crime. You That's where I that. thought too. I was like excited. Ooh. Tell us. Well, Forget the, this episode. I, there's, <laughs> well, uh, there's some other cousins that I probably mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Or we're uh, going to find out that we're all somehow related to Benji. <laughs> 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 that six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Well, yeah. how many? It's probably less degrees to Benji. Four, four degrees. Um, okay, so for uh, let's let's jump in. Uh, for those who don't know how Unhinged works, uh, I will share my screen. I'll pop up a picture of some kind of door uh, install, doorbell, mm -hmm. uh, code violation. Um, we'll knock and slam, and today hopefully shatter 
uh, these uh, doors and um, throw out any helpful tips to help uh, people better understand what's going on there and uh, then give it a knocking score. Uh, one being not too knocking bad and 10 being pretty knocking bad. Like this is very bad. We should call the AHJ, get uh, Andrew's association involved. Uh, <laughs> I'm just getting to Andrew. Uh, but, uh, and then um, we'll go from there. How does that sound? You guys ready? Yeah, let me get my, my old eyes closer to the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Not that old. So this is what door hardware nerds see when they go to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the light at the end of the tunnel. So are you, are you guys ready? We'll find out. Are you, are you waiting for it? Are you ready, Andrew? I don't like, know. am I supposed to hit a buzzer and go first? Or is this a competition? <laughs> I get very competitive. <laughs> Oh, good, good. Let's let's go play cornhole at Glassfield or something. It'll be there at the tailgate party. Really? Yeah. All right, challenge. Door Dork versus Glass Nerd. Let's bring it on. Challenge accepted. Well. <laughs> oh, no. Um, is this one of the ones that has those that privacy glass? That's yeah, like, I, have, I have more questions than, than answers. That's that's usually how these work around here, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are some things that are actually right with this, depending yeah, on if there is an ADA stall adjacent somewhere. The entrance doesn't look wide enough to be ADA accessible. Um, good point on Mia's part that I, I pray that there is some privacy glass, some switchable privacy glass options on here, though it doesn't strike me as a super current new install. I mean, it's kind of a dated look and I wouldn't think it would incorporate that kind of technology, but here's hoping. Why would you spend money on a full door when you have a stall? Like if you peek into the next one over, it's just like stall partition. So why would you have spent money on a full door here? to have stall partitions between them and and more importantly i think why would you have glass on that door <laughs> well yes but that was like the first question you know hey I, I just have to comment at least they got the handle handed correctly yeah no it's it's handed correctly um that that could be an ada accessible lever pull that it looks like it swings in you should be good there I me mean, is dead on like i don't know why you would have that that fully framed with all the molding and glass when there's nothing but a, a standard partition b between the two you can actually you know it looks like you can see some of the light peeking under or from even to the closed door side too yeah i yeah. mean honestly the only time i ever see this type of application with that privacy glass on a stall is someone that sells that kind of privacy glass and it's kind of like a challenge and they want to show proof to anyone that comes in for a tour or whatever and they like they want to show it off like yeah hey, you could even Take a dump right here and no one will see you. <laughs> um, there's a couple of other things I like here. Number one, there's no toilet paper. There's also none of the sanitary bit. Yep, those things. And I can see two. Food? Yeah, I don't know what they're called, but and there I can see two shadows uh in the reflection of the uh, so the, <laughs> somebody was having a conversation about this while they were there and the toilet seat was left up yes well i'm assuming this is a men's bathroom well, that's but... presumptuous <laughs> <laughs> well rarely in a women's bathroom does the toilet seat get put up somebody could be bringing their chi young child in so yeah, okay. it does that's happen true. but do you, do you have any background info on this benji i mean or is this just something you found or someone sent to you and yeah so someone sent it to me uh, a while back probably two or three years ago, I found this and I went back through some of my photos trying to find like glass solutions. Oh, you've been, and, you've been saving this one for me? Thank yeah, you. yeah, this one is very <laughs> special. <laughs> I bet Just you for... it has better acoustics than a standard stall. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. Sound, sound counseling or sound reverberation. Yeah, I don't know if you would want that in there. <laughs> I bet you it gets a, an incredible STC for a bathroom stall. All right, so not too knocking bad, but like kind of knocking bad if you think about it. What what do you guys think? What if you gave it a knocking score? I need some context. If you're a mill worker, I think it's fine. <laughs> if you're just installing a bathroom stall in a in a public restroom, I I'd give this somewhere around a, a four. I mean, there's nothing. I don't think there's anything code wise that's killing it. I think it's just some egregious decision making. <laughs> Yeah, I think I, I'm like in the two range. I'm assuming there's probably a handicap stall further down. So there's an accessible stall down there. And then maybe there's a way that we can't see to create privacy. 
I'm hoping. I'm hoping that there's a way. There's but probably I'm... some mini blinds we can't see. <laughs> <Yeah. right back. laughs> well, if there was mini blinds, you know we'd see them because they'd be like tangled up in a mess. Yeah. Uh, but generally, safety wise, I think it's fine. Privacy wise. Uh, let's hope there's some other solution in place that we don't see. Could, could you imagine dealing with blinds when you're going to the bathroom? Like you like sit down and you're like, wait a second. Oh, people can see me. And you're like trying to reach for the blinds. And... I mean, if this was my place of work, I would just come in with uh, the shelf liner or like the the sticky book liner. And I would just put it on the inside. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Like permanently. It'd be like a permanent fix. Yes, the glass looks nice. But like, this is not an application where we want glass. What if it's like a medium security facility and they can't let oh. anyone have time alone? But they're also giving them quite a few, I don't know, some, it looks like a very comfortable place compared to a prison cell. But yeah, no bad for the, the bathroom monitor that would have to sit there and watch the person. <laughs> That's got to be a hard job to have. And what if they break the glass and use the glass to harm themselves or harm someone else? Or So Mia, you went with a two. Maybe I should have saved my four because I have no idea what the next two are you're going to show me. Maybe I don't know the scale yet. There's no wrong answers here, except That's for when true. you're wrong. Oh, I will find some wrong answers. <laughs> <laughs> Believe that. Well, wait, what did you rate it? Not too knocking bad. I would probably agree with you guys. Maybe like a, a three or four, like. I wouldn't want to be sitting in there if there wasn't some extra form of privacy. I think we do need some more information as we often do with some of these openings. But I think there's a reason someone's taking a picture of it and a reason we're talking about it today. So it's a nice dark bronze, elegant looking handle. It's, it's yeah, yeah. Tasteful, if that's your style. <laughs> okay, let's jump into the next one. You ready? If you want to be featured on a future episode of Unhinged or you have a photo to share with us, leave a comment down below.